Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in our modeling analysis and design of Pile Foundation using Autodesk Robot. Now in this video we are going to continue our theoretical knowledge about piles because I want to explain the entire Pile Foundation before I start talking about robot. In this video I'm going to be talking about the Coil and Castello's method in estimating the tip bearing capacity of piles. If you are new to this video series then please take a look on the link I will be posting at the top right which is basically the full video series that goes in chronological order. Anyway, the objective today is to understand this method in calculating the tip bearing capacity and without further ado, let's dive into this video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Alright, now Coil and Castello's method is kind of a very quick method because all you have to say here is that this dude has analyzed a lot of real life sized piles and found approximations and correlations for the values of the bearing capacity in sand because he tested in sand so that's where it would work. Castello and Coil basically just gives you one bearing capacity using those values. It's a very uh, similar equation to what you have seen before in Visage's method but the difference here is that this is only the pressure without this average thing. Vesic's method has of course been explained in the previous video. You can take a look on the top right if you want to access the previous video. AP is the area of the pile, including the soil plug. Q is basically gamma multiplied by the embedment length, which is the stress of the soil above the embedment length. And NQ is some magic value. I keep calling them magic values, but they are not. They are correlation values from a plethora of tests. And this NQ can be found from some charts. Notice that the way of accessing the charts needs the embedment ratio. The embedment ratio is the ratio between the length or embedment length divided by the diameter. I want to focus on the word embedment length because it's not always the pile length. It is the embedment length, the length of the pile inside the bearing soil. So if you have multiple strata of soil, for example, you have some weak soil on the top, and a very strong soil in the bottom, then the embedment length is just the depth of the strong soil. Keep that in mind for future um, examples. Anyway, in our case, L over D, if you have L over D and you also have theta or phi, the friction angle, then you can select the correct bearing capacity factor. For example, let's say that your phi is 32 and your embedment ratio is 30. If you just cross like this with a line, you can see that it crosses the phi 32 curve here, which will give you a, a, a factor of around 32 or something. It was just kind of an interesting uh, coincidence, 32 and 32. So that's how we use those charts, which seems to be easy, and to be honest, it is. So let's take a look on the example. Here, the same parameters are given. He wants you to find the tip bearing capacity ultimate of a pile with the same 35 degrees, 17 cubic meter cube, 15 meter length, and rectangular cross section. Now here, once again, it's just one equation, and that's a very simple one, by the way. For it, you need to find AP, and you need to find the embedment length, because from the embedment length, you can find the value NQ. So the embedment length here is 15 meters divided by the diameter. Now, this is not a circle, I know. This is not a circle, it's a rectangle. And you would think, and you are right, by the way, because, we're not sure. Some of us like to use the side distance as a diameter, and one of us likes to use the diagonal as a diameter. I am a fan of using the side distance as a diameter, because if you use a diagonal as a diameter, you're assuming that the section is being enclosed inside a circle. So of course, yeah, there are two schools in that, but I am a fan of using the side distance as a diameter for rectangles. 15 by 0.45 is 33.3. So we go to 33.3 here somewhere and dash us a horizontal line. You want 35. Now there is no 35 line, but we need to somehow interpolate between those two lines, which is here somewhere. So you don't go with the curve, you just go up. 35 is in the middle between 36 and 34. You just go up straight line and you would reach somewhere here, which is around 45-ish, 46-ish. It's 48. Okay, fine. So now it makes sense. See, you don't follow the curve. It's just go up. 48 is the NQ. Now we need Q, it's gamma LB, so you have everything you need. From it, you can find QP, which is something very easy. Now, of course, here one question must arise immediately. Like, we have Meyerhoff's method. We have Vesic's method. We have Coyle and Castello's method. 
We have methods from Broad and so on, I'm talking about the SPT test. Which method should we use? You would have to use a consistent method for the tip and skin friction resistance. For example, you use Maya host method in calculating QP and QS. You use Coil and Castello's method in finding QP and QS. You use Vesic's method in finding QP and QS. And then you choose the smallest summation of all of them. You sum up Maya host method and estimate the pile bearing capacity fully here. You, you sum up Coil and Castello's method. You sum up Vesic's method. You sum up every single method, and then you take the smallest sum as your most conservative approximation. Sometimes they differ wildly, and it doesn't matter. You must be on the conservative side. And don't forget that this is the ultimate strength. You need still to divide by a factor of safety of at least 2.5, and some people even use 3 for piles. Now let me just quickly talk about SPT and CPD since I talked about them. SPT test stands for Standard Penetration Test. And the result of a standard penetration test is the standard penetration number, which is N60 called. And if you have the standard penetration number, then you can just use it to find QP. And this is not the tip bearing capacity, it's the soil bearing capacity. You have to multiply by AP to find the absolute maximum force. Now what is N60? N60 is not really the um, SPT number at the soil, at the pile tip but it's the average around the pile tip because the bearing capacity is not only at the pile tip, it's in a region around the pile tip. Now, what is this region around the pile tip? It's 10 diameters above and four diameters below. So you take whatever SPT values you have in all those layers and you average them. There is another guy called Briaud. I'm not sure if I mentioned his name correctly. This is basically that QP is some magic value and 60 power 36. Of course, here finally, there is something called the cone penetration resistance. In this case, QP equals QC. The cone penetration resistance here is exactly at the tip of the pipe. So yeah, it's quite a shorter video, but I needed to finish Coil and Castello. So with that being said, I want to give a CC sized shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the videos and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the videos then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.